Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be continuing the series on developing your very own mobile stock trading app using React Native and the Alpaca Commission Free Trading API. Uh, before I get started in coding, I just wanted to give a quick shout out and thank you uh, to the people from Alpaca for sending me this very cool t-shirt in the mail that I'm wearing right now. I really like the design with the Alpaca um, on it. But even more so than the t-shirt, I just wanted to thank them for sharing my videos with their community. I uh, didn't have many subscribers at the beginning of December, but that number has increased uh, tenfold uh, as of the end of January. So I really appreciate uh, the people from Alpaca for sharing my videos, and it's been very cool to be part of that community. And it gives me a lot of motivation to continue making these videos on uh, financial data and uh, trading APIs. So I'm gonna continue doing that throughout the year uh, and keep growing the channel. So uh, thanks a lot for that. Um, so now uh, with that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and get started um, with developing our app and continuing uh, where we left off. So in the previous uh, series of videos I'd created, uh, we had started making this, uh, this dashboard for our app that shows our buying power, um, it shows some market ETF indexes and their prices, and also show, shows uh, the current positions that we hold in our Alpaca account. And if you remember, um, we had initially held some Microsoft and Apple stock that we sold, and then uh, we flipped at the end of the year to turning bearish, so we bought some of these inverse ETF these uh, bearish ETFs like TZA and QID. Uh, you see those are up nicely uh, this week. Um, but also, um, more than just buying uh, bearish ETFs, I wanted to get some activity in our account because the next screen we're gonna be making is the activity screen. And we wanna show all of our transactions, how much profit and loss we made, and um, and wh whether we bought, bought which, which positions we bought and sold so that we have a complete history of our trading account from within, within this mobile app. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with a quick sketch of what the activity screen looks like, and then we'll translate that to code. So I'm in Pixelmator. We made this ugly napkin sketch in one of the first videos of what we're building. Uh, we had four different tabs at the bottom. We have the dashboard screen, the activity screen, the search screen, and the settings screen. And then we started working on the dashboard screen. But now we want to create the activity screen. So I'm just gonna do a new document here um, that's just a blank screen and we can start sketching out what the activity screen would look like. So I just draw a rectangle here for our screen. And then at the very top, we'll just have a normal label. Um, so this is the title of the screen and it's just called activity. And then we're just gonna use a flat list like we did for the position section of the dashboard. And then there'll just be a series of rows here and we'll show all the transactions that have been made in our account. And then later we'll probably wanna filter those by only buy, sell, and dividend activity, but we'll show all the activity for now. And so um, what, would we, what would we wanna see? We'd wanna see the uh, symbols um, that we uh, traded. So I'd do something like Apple right here, something like Microsoft. And then we'd wanna say whether we bought or sold it. So uh, let's, let's say we did buy here, buy here, and then uh, we'll have another row for Apple when we sold it sell, and then Microsoft sell. And then we'd wanna see the date when we bought or sold it. So this would be like October 1st, 2019. And then we had a, a sell of December uh, 27th, uh, 2019. And then we wanna see, uh, show what price we did this at. So we do uh, the number of shares. So we'll do a thousand shares at 136. And then, oh, sorry, that would be Microsoft. So we do a thousand shares at micro, 136 of Microsoft. And then maybe we sold a thousand shares at 158 or so. And then that was also on December 27th, uh, 2019. So yeah, we can just start out with um, a, a number of rows for our flat list. And then we'll tell React Native how to render that row. And then we'll just divide it up into two cells here. Uh, so on the left side, we'll show uh, the symbol and the date. And then on the right side, we'll, do, we'll show whether we bought or sold and the quantity that we bought or sold and at what price. So uh, that's how we'll start it now. We'll make adjustments as needed. Uh, let's go ahead and translate this into code. So I'm gonna jump into Visual Studio Code now and start coding this up using Flexbox and Flatlist and React Components and all that. 
Okay, so I have Android Studio rolling, and if you remember, we had this list of virtual devices we had set up, so I got a Pixel 3 here. I'm gonna click play, and that'll start the Android emulator, and you'll see that I have this activity screen, and it is blank. I also have a Visual Studio Code running here, and you remember we had created this dashboard screen last time with Flexbox, and then we also had um, some positions, and we used this flat list in order to display those positions. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and start uh, getting the data that we need for our activity screen um, from the Alpaca API. So I have this uh, JavaScript file that we've created called activity screen. You can see it's pretty empty. There's no state. Uh, there's nothing when the component mounts and it just says activity screen. So let's go ahead and make it do something. So in order to get our account activity, um, let's go to our Alpaca account here and uh, click on documentation and remember um, where this API documentation is. So I click that, Web API V2, and you see there's this uh, section called account activities, and this is their endpoint to get all uh, the activities for my account. Uh, you can get all activities for one type, so you could do like just buy activity or just sell activity, um, and you can filter it down on date and so forth. Um, I'm just gonna get all the account activities using this V2 account activities. So I'm gonna copy that endpoint. And if you remember last time, we had created this directory called services and it had alpaca.js and polygon.js. Alpaca is the one we're using for um, our Alpaca API service. And so we just have this little wrapper here uh, using this uh, package called API sauce. And that just makes it easy. It takes a lot of the repetition out. Uh, we can just configure the headers and API key one time here and a timeout. And you see, we just have these really short methods that we're going to use uh, after we instantiate this Alpaca API object. Um, so I'm just gonna create one for get activities. We already had get account and get positions. So I'm gonna do get activities equals, and this is a function. And then we'll do api.get, and I copy down v2 account activities. And so we've already kind of encapsulated um, a call to the Alpaca API. And so we just need to provide a function name and an endpoint, and then we can return that get activities and then this get activities method is now exposed. And then in our activity screen, we can go in and import it. So I'm gonna import Alpaca API from dot dot slash services Alpaca. And so then we'll have this Alpaca API object here. And when the component mounts, we can do a const Alpaca API equals, um, Al well, let's see how we did it in the previous one, I forgot. Um, yeah, const API equals Alpaca API. So um, I'll do it the same way here. So I'll just copy this from our dashboard screen. And let's see, I'm in activity screen. And then we'll just do const API equals Alpaca API. So we create a new instance of Alpaca API and we go api.get. And here we're gonna do our new get activities, which auto completes there. And then we'll get a response. And if it's okay, then we can do something. So I'm gonna go ahead and log the response, console.log response, and then let's see what it looks like. Oh, and I forgot a closing brace, API get activities, response, then, and then another closing parentheses. So let's dump that to the console and see what the response looks like, and then we can take all the attributes from that response and start connecting it to our render function here. So um, I have Android emulator running, and let's see, I'm gonna make sure we run the latest copy. Um, I'm gonna stop this and we're gonna do npm start. And that's gonna start up our expo uh, bundler here. I'm gonna click, so I'm gonna kill any instances that are running. I'm gonna click run on Android device emulator. Um, you'll see it'll start uh, building the bundle and deploying it to uh, this emulator. It says downloading JavaScript bundle. I click on activity. You see it still says activity screen here, but in my console, uh, it dumped a big list of objects of all of my buys and sells. And so you see uh, this data attribute, we have, uh, you see a buy of symbol QID. So that's a recent buy from December 27th. And then you can also see our old history of when we bought Microsoft stock at 138 uh, in, at the end of September. And we also bought uh, Apple stock here also at 221, and it's now over $300 a share. So that was a great buy. Um, so let's take this data attribute and uh, set it to the state, um, bring it to the state of our React component so that we can render uh, all these transactions on our activity screen. So 
I'm in uh, Visual Studio Code here. If response is OK, we know we have this response.data. And that looks like to be just a list of objects. And so what we'll do here is set our initial state of activities to an empty array. And when it comes back, when this response comes back, we can say this.setState. And then we'll just say, This dot set state if response is okay. This dot set state and then our activities um, we'll set that equal to response dot data and then so we should have activities in there and then let's see if that actually works. Um, we'll go ahead and log. Um, actually, we'll just dump it on the screen and then and then just leave it at that. So um, I'm going to do uh, this dot state dot activities dot map. And then I'll do activity. And then for each activity, um, we want to return a view. So we'll do view. Um, and let's see, view. And then we'll do text inside. And so activity. So I'm just going to log the word activity over and over again. Sweet. Actually, that looks pretty good. So there's a bunch of transactions, and it's just writing the word activity over and over again. So in theory, what it's actually doing is writing that word activity for each object uh, in this list. And so now I just got to replace this activity screen part. I'll delete that. We don't need it. And let's use the actual activity object on each iteration. So we'll do text, text. So we'll do a lot of text. And we'll do um, activity type fill. OK. Uh, we'll show the side, activity.side activity.side, we'll do activity.qty or quantity. So we'll do activity.quantity. And then I'll put it next to the side. So it'd be like cell 1000. And then I'll do an at sign. And then I'll do the price, the price there. So I'm going to add an at sign and then activity.price. And then I'm also going to show the transaction time right here. So transaction time. So I'll do just another line for now. Text um, activity dot transaction time. And then I'm going to run that and see what it looks like. Um, so you see, uh, yeah, we have this listing. We're getting real data from the Alpaca API. We got the symbol. We got buy. We got the quantity at a certain price. And we have our activity in reverse chronological order. So you can see our most recent activity from December is at the top when we went short. And you also see the end of September, um, our Q4 long strategy that we uh, did when we bought Microsoft and Apple stock. So that all looks good. Um, so the last thing we see here is each item and list needs a unique key property. Uh, so what we need to do here is for each item in this list, we do key equals. We need some unique identifier for this uh, row. And so you see that uh, Alpaca provides us this ID for each bit of activity. So we'll just use that as our key. So we'll do activity.id. And if we run that again, and it refreshes, um, let's see, dismiss. I think that'll fix it. I'm just going to run the app one more time just to be sure. So I'm going to run on device. Let that load again. And you can see our activity. There's no warnings. And we have a listing of all of our transactions uh, that we've made in our account. Uh, so yeah, that's it for now. I think we're going to stop there since the video is getting kind of long. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to style this. We'll put it in a flat list, just like we did with the positions uh, component earlier on the dashboard screen. And we'll modify our style sheet to kind of style this up, bold some things, add a little bit of color, and improve our activity screen. And maybe we'll add uh, some filters so we can just show uh, certain date, date ranges or uh, only buys and sells and that sort of thing. So thanks a lot for watching, and stay tuned for another video. Thanks.